Hello, this is Lego Joe post commentary or whatever. I made a video and I forgot to point out one thing. Uh, all these bosses are all weak against piercing damage, so that's one thing to make note of. Secondly, this video has a lot of salt in it, so if you don't like to hear rage, anger, anguish, or if you revel in them for whatever reason, you guys might just have a sadist streak or something. Well, this is a video for you, I guess, or not for you. These three bosses have a lot of salt in them. A lot. Extremely a lot. Hello, dude and dudes, and welcome to Lego Joe's short guide of this anxiety, infuriating, tedious, goddamn new boss event for the idol part two, whatever. I'm just so done. Oh my god. Anyways, for the first boss. Let's go over some basic schematics. It's a holy boss. It's a piece of shit. It's infuriating. The first thing you want to do is quickly go down or up all the way. And at the when you get to its back, you do have a chance to do some attacks to it. And I found out, I don't know if this can apply to all characters, but it's doing it for my Firefox Silica. Is that if this boss never ever moves, just turns around and tries to attack me, and I just keep on repeating this process, it will never do anything ever again aside from these parable attacks. So, try it out! It might work for you! Just don't miss, guys. So, if the boss does move like so, then the thing I mentioned before will not happen, and it will have some attack patterns to it. Aside from that, this boss has two parable attacks. The first one is some type of sort of overhead swing and the second one is just about to hit you with his bag and then the parry balls is very very easy to tell it just squats down like it's tired so remember to dodge it and don't forget the unparry bolt is a double hit for the people who have range you have an option here so you don't want to be as stupid like me and not move at that point what you want to do is when the game starts count one to jump and jump in it's all good honestly i don't know if uh Range it will actually do well this boss, but here we go, it's an option. One, two, and jump. So onto the gorilla boss, I suggest you to move forward a little and then parry. Doing this will ensure the boss to always use a parryable attack afterwards. This is very important because if you do not do this, you run the risk of going into RNG. Let me give you an example, excuse the lag. If I don't move and parry, this boss will go into RNG where it will decide whether or not to use unparryable or parryable attack. And as you can see, not very parryable, you want to get a good timer. So just move forward and then parry. Much easier, much cleaner, and better. Now the boss has a few parryable attacks. The first one being this long as wind up swing. Be sure to put in some attacks in between. Now usually this raw, you can easily dodge it by doing a vertical dodge. But I digress. Better just do a vertical dodge and try to run away as hard as possible. You can easily dodge it. Now this gorilla mating dance, uh, it doesn't do damage whenever it hits you. And afterwards, it will always do these body flops. So be sure to parry. It's easy. You can you can parry that attack too. And I failed there because I'm just so tired. This boss, these bosses are just infuriating. I want to point out that when it backs up, it usually tries to do that attack or un unparryable. So be on guard to parry or dodge. Well, rare in the beginning, after half its HP is gone, this gorilla would do more belly flops more often. So do pay attention, they are easy to dodge. It's like it just does a thumbs up or something and just starts rolling after you. At that point, just smash him in the face. It's not that hard. You can easily tell. Oh, belly flop, and then you parry him, and then you smash him in the face. Excuse the lag. Oh boy, it's the third boss, Rainbow Eyes. We've all been waiting for this piece of shit. So, what's special about him? Well, first off, you do this, so you can just smack him a few times in the face. Now, one thing you should know, I will tell you right now, is that it has an attack pattern up until about 50% of its HP. What that pattern is, is that it will always use a parryable attack, and then an unparryable, and then a parryable, and an unparryable. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over until about half its HP, where it will sometimes do two parryables or three parryables in a row. 
And then you just go and say, fuck, I missed a chance to do some DPS, and then you just want to kill yourself because this boss is a piece of fucking shit. I hate it so much. Now, this boss has two unparryable attacks. One is fairly easy to dodge. But the second one where it does that, you want to move all the way up because this boss when it starts out is orientated slightly to the bottom so you cannot dodge at the bottom at all. Now this boss is by no means hard at all, it's just tedious. It's because it has a set of attack pattern that it makes you learn, oh this is an attack pattern. And then it switches it up a little at 50% and below and then when you just misread its attack, it's like you just want to go kill yourself because it's a long string of bosses. The very first boss is extremely annoying. The second boss is bearable, but this third boss isn't that hard, but it still has very tedious moments, especially when you get hit by magical rock. That stupid move that it does at the very beginning, for some reason, sometimes can hit you even when you're extremely far away. Now I don't even want to go through all these bosses to find out recording because you'll experience it yourself and when that happens, you'll just say screw you Bandai. Anyways, this ends my video guide for these three bosses. They are tedious, I'll tell you this much. Practice, practice, practice. Do not give up, just maintain discipline. I hope you all did well in this ranking event. Please like if you liked this. Subscribe for more and I'll see you all on the next video. You is so cute. Oh my god, look at her cuteness. Up next, my no damage run.